Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Hey, trust ladies, God, this is Nyoka Hall, and I want to welcome you to Trust God, Cry, God, Repeat Podcast, remember. a fresh new podcast for your encouragement. Today's topic we're going to talk about is nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. So let's dive in. After a long day, my husband and I were sitting down listening to an audiobook entitled You Matter by Rachel Jankovic. She's the daughter of uh, Doug Wilson. And if you're familiar with Canon Press, that's the Rachel I'm referring to. Um, now, I was respi- I was inspired. I rebuke tongue tightness. I was inspired to um, sketch out an idea I had in my head. Um, and it was something kind of personal. So I didn't want to miss the details that I was thinking of. So I got it sketched out. And as I was sketching, um, this particular chapter started um, talking about glorification. Now, this is not a new topic for me, and I'm sure you all have heard of uh, glorification or how we are supposed to glorify God. Um, But this was not a new take, but I didn't realize how far the scope of glorification went. So let's imbibe in some scripture before we break down how far reaching the scope of glorification really is. So the first scripture I want to share, it comes from Romans 8, 28, and this is the ESV version. And it says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. The next scripture I want to share is why even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are more value, you are of more value than many sparrows. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 7, and that's also the ESV. Now, the next one I want to share before we really get into it is um, uh, Psalms, sorry, Psalms 56 and 8 through 11. And it reads, You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in a bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. And God whose word I praise. And the Lord whose word I praise. And God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? And again, that's Psalms 56 verse 8 through 11. Now ladies, hearing about glorification and how far reaching Um, it goes, it cut me to my core. And it also, it was like a cut that also was healed on the way out, if that makes sense. Like the way she explained how we are to glorify the Lord, um, no matter what we're going through, like it really does change our um, perspective into having a godly perspective. Um, So that day I had had one of those Uh, one thing on top of the other thing kind of day and the kids were kind of, you know, doing their own thing and going back and forth. Um, I'm sure someone can identify or like just understand what I, what I mean by that. Uh, So it was one of those type days. And so when I was hearing it, because sometimes you can feel really dejected and and kind of feel like, man, all these things are going on and, you know, all these challenges are happening. How can this day possibly bring God glory? And it was one of those days. So how she broke it down was just saying that we are to glorify God in all the things that we go through, um, because it's still a good grace. It's still a um, blessing that we're able to go through those things like okay so if the day was really terrible or you know that like I said the kids are at each other or whatever it is like there's still glory to give to God so a challenging day with a toddler God I, I thank you like being able to pull them aside and say I'm going to pray for you right now. Let's go ahead and pray because today is is kind of challenging for you too. Let's pray. Lord God, I give you glory for this toddler. No matter if she's falling out right now, you know, and acting up or whatever, you know, I, I thank you for this moment that I'm able to go to you on her behalf or his behalf or, who, you know, whoever's behalf, whatever the situation is. Um, but she also challenged uh, women to make sure that, the discipline side is handled as well. Now I'm not trying to, you know, share her whole book or try to share, you know, exactly every fine detail of what she shared. But like I said, it cut me to my core. And then I allowed the word of God, like some of those scriptures and the ones to come to heal me on the way out. Like it was like, 
you know, this needs to happen, this that needs to happen. Talk to your husband, you know, make sure that you're open and honest with the challenges and allow the word of God to direct you on what to do next. And that's where we were left. So life seems or had seemed to be hitting hard. This week is no exception. Um, we are currently mourning the loss of a loved one. Um, and a second one we found out last night. So um, life is hitting hard. All the challenges, all the constant discipline, all the redirection, all the spills, all the, you know, toys, all the things everywhere, you know, trying to get the, you know, things back into to order after spring break. <laughs> I'll say it like that. All of that was coming at the same time. But I want to encourage you, ladies, that nothing is wasted. God can work all those things together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And I'm paraphrasing that because I want to go back and read it. Uh, it says, as we know that for all those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Again, that was Romans 8, 28 that we just read. But I want to encourage you that no matter what, during those challenges, during the, the constant, you know, upsets or the, the, the disciplines or even through the miscarriages, ladies, I'm talking to many ladies out here. Some of you are still struggling with, um, you know, miscarriages or even stillborns or um, infertility. I'm still praying for you on a weekly basis. Um, those challenges or the challenges of getting negative pregnancy tests, you know, after trying to conceive and, you know, all these frustrations out of all of that, nothing is wasted. Out of all the miscommunications of the day, the random appointments, even the ones you may have forgotten about, I'm sure nobody has done that, <laughs> you know, just me. But out of all those things, like I said, losing a loved one or burning the pot roast, <laughs> or some of you may have the perfect pot roast, you know, that day, followed by a tantrum like none other, you know, those things, all of those things are working together for the good. All the ums and the likes and the mispronounced words or the stumbling while you're recording a podcast. Maybe that's just for me. <laughs> but all those things are working together. All those things are working together. None of that is wasted. None of that is wasted. Okay, so I had to take time and I challenge you to take time to glorify God. Glorify God. Take time. It changes everything. It sets everything into a right perspective. Even the roughest days, I'm telling you, pray for right perspective. Pray for um, God to be glorified even in this situation and step back and see what God does with it. It's something to go through hard times and step back and be able to find something to glorify the Lord with. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I challenge you to, to see that nothing is wasted. Now, I'm going to talk about glorifying for a second. And, you know, I'm a wordy or should I say a, a nerdy wordy <laughs> or a nerd, shall I say. And I like to throw definitions in there sometimes. So uh, I want to talk about glorifying. Glorifying is to make glorious by bestowing honor, praise or ab um, admiration is to give glory as in worship. So that's what I mean by glorifying, lifting up the Lord Jesus um, no matter what like lifting him up, giving him glory, taking a moment to really um, ask him for right perspective, asking God for a right perspective to see to, or to even be able to say, because every time he might not show you how all these things are working together. A lot of times you just have to trust God, cry, repeat. That sounds familiar. So in those moments, I want to challenge you ladies to, you know, try to not even try to do it try is out that's outdated so do the glorification and like literally stop and ask god lord it's even hard to see any glory in this but you deserve it god you deserve the glory for this and, and watch that become um i don't want to say habit but watch that become something that you go to first instead of the oh i'm overwhelmed or oh i cannot do another thing or oh if one more thing happens watch that re get replaced by god i give you glory god you are magnificent god no matter who we lost lord god no matter what we go through lord jesus you are to be glorified i'm telling you ladies i'm living it <laughs> glorified god it will revolutionize your day it really really will 
Now we have to remember that God sees the bigger picture. We see what's in a moment or we see um, kind of a snippet of time, but God sees it all. So it might be baffling to us. It might not make sense, um, but God sees down the road. He sees what happened 10 years ago. Like, you know, he has this wide scope of everything. So let's trust him, ladies. Let's trust him and watch him use the good, the bad, the ugly, the upsetting, the frustrating, the doesn't make sense, the overwhelming, the all the other things together watch him work those things together for your good because nothing is wasted now time for some more imbibing of the scripture and the imbibing is another thing i've been having like wordy moments um but to imbibe like to to actually take inside of you to eat of is is what i'm talking about when i say um imbibing more scripture so this comes from psalms 27 verse 14 from the esv as well it says wait for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage wait for the lord the other scripture i want to share is galatians 6 and 7 do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever one sows that will he also reap that will he also reap so that's one I want to share, but I want to let you all know, um, with all the strong delusion that's going on in this world, with all the confusion and chaos and nonsense, God is not tricked by it. God is not sitting in heaven, scratching his head, trying to figure out his next move. He's not. God knows all, sees all, and can do all. Like, ladies, remember who we serve and remember that we don't have to fall for the lies of Satan. We don't, we really don't, you know, we have to make sure that we are, um, we are in a place where we are not only reading and imbibing the scripture, but we are enjoying the life that we have in Christ. And that enjoyment comes from daily going to him and reading and praying and just enjoying him for who he is. It takes practice because the world makes things look picture perfect. You know, everything has a filter. Every picture has, you know, a changeable uh, intensity button or, you know, whatever type of changes that happen with cameras and tablets and whatever. You know, they're able to present things in a perfect light. But how many know, even in that second or that filter or that, you know, a change of their face or softening of their skin or the perfection it looks like that they have with their family, life is still happening. Now the humbling realization that all of, um, that all moms are training children, all moms are training them. Either you're training your child to be a slave to the world or you are tra training your child to not depart from the faith. That's, that's really where it is. Cause if you're not teaching and training, the world is trying to teach and train. And trust me, they're, there's, they're doing 24 hours a day. They're finding a way to get little Johnny's attention and, you know, make sure that he follows the world's way. So let's make sure that we remember that these children are entrusted to us. These children are entrusted to us by the Lord Jesus Christ to take care of, to nurture, to love, to um, remind them to not only um, love us and our family, but to uphold the standards of God, to be respectful to their fathers and honor their mothers. And, and you know, it's so many beautiful scriptures that we have to be careful not to pull apart and say, but if they do, you know, but if they stray, then they'll be back. No, 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 no. The scripture says train up a child in the way they should go. And I don't know why I'm just sticking on just the training up child part, but training up a child, it says they will not depart. So if they, do, if they do depart, it's due to not training them or not training them up in righteousness. So there's a part to play in that. We can't just, you know, change the word of God to, to make ourselves feel better about not training up our child, our children in righteousness. The world is crazy out here, crazy, and the Lord is soon to return. We can see that as scripture is already, the prophecies in scripture are already being fulfilled. We can see that the Lord is soon to return. Are we preparing our children? Are we, are we sharing the gospel in a light that doesn't make it seem like a clear food diet? 
Are we sharing our faith in a way that people are compelled to come to Christ? That's just, that's just, that's a challenge. Let's, let's make sure that we are doing those things this week. But back to the nothing is wasted. I want to encourage you um, to not strive for perfection. The very, uh, the motive of striving is to get you hyper-focused on something that usually is not Christ. Like, even if it's, oh, I'm striving to have this career, or I'm striving to have um, this thing, or I'm striving to be in this place, or I'm striving, it always makes your focus that thing. And it usually takes your focus away from God. Like God begins to slide down the level of importance on the totem pole, for lack of a better term. We have to make sure that we do not strive for perfection because it is not attainable this side of heaven. Take the blinders off. Let's see that, think that we'll basically see things for what they are. Allow God to keep you with a focused and sober mind. Allow God to keep you and, and just allow you to be protected during this, the time of this craziness. Because it's crazy out here. But to God be the glory because he still holds all things together. We are not going to be dismayed because all these things, my husband and I were talking about this. Um, we were talking about this in the car the other day coming from the gym. I'm like, babe, it's crazy to think. That, like it's a delusion it has to be strong delusion that is going on because people really think that half doing things for for god or um doing things that are leading people to sin or glorifying sin or um anything that is like sinful or enjoying the world like those things will not go unpunished some people think that, oh, you know, I can get away with this or I can get away with that. We all, we all have a reckoning. We all, we all have to come before the Lord for the things that we've done, for the things that we've said, the way that we've acted. And I am, I'm saying it like that. And I am praying, excuse me. I am praying that I hear well, good, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I'm hearing welcome in. That's what I'm praying. I'm preparing my family alongside and should I say submissively under my husband, I'm preparing my family to meet the Lord Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I'm not focused on this world. I'm not trying to um, make sure that they follow the latest trends and where the latest, you know, whether it's clothes or whether it's the um, TV version of how teenagers act or, you know, whatever, or whatever, whatever worldly way I can care less because my Lord and Jesus is soon to return he's soon to return ladies and i just want to encourage you to remember that nothing is wasted nothing is wasted we have to make sure that we're taking ownership of our own actions and equipping our children to take ownership of their own actions that we teach them not to make excuses but we teach them what is honorable that we teach them that the word of god says to obey that we, the, that we teach them that the word of God says um, to listen, to honor, to honor their parents, to honor and to love, to make sure that we have each other's back, to make sure we instill that, that we look out for one another, that we open our word and we actually imbibe, we take it in, we eat of it, as the word of God says. So I challenge you ladies this week to pray for right perspective. Pray to make glorifying God the goal. Glorify him above all things this week, ladies. That's my challenge. Reach out to somebody. I say that all the time. Um, it's very important to reach out to someone else and just let them know that I'm glad you're still alive. How about that? If you can't find anything else to say, contact your sister in Christ and let her know you love her. Let her know that you're glad that God made her. Let her know that, you know, she, I'm, hey, I'm glad that you're still alive. Cause that means something it means something so i want to i want to challenge you to do those things and i want to challenge you always to remember to trust god as you cry and repeat and before i forget um there is a new tab on trustgodcarpeat.com it's called homeschool corner it's a little you know little page 
dedicated to add a little bit of encouragement, a little bit more encouragement for those who are homeschooling. We are in this together. We are, you are not forgotten. God sees all the work that you're putting in and that, you know, the blessing it is that you are able to do it. So just check it out if you get a chance. Trust God, cry, cry repeat dot com. Share it with someone. Don't forget trust to subscribe. God, and remember to trust always God, trust God, cry, repeat. God bless you.